So in this video, we'll show how to solve the quark equation. And so we will assume that we were given the monic equation to begin with, because we've already discussed that uh, if the coefficient of x to the power of 4 is non-zero, then we can divide by it, and it will have no effect on the roots. And I mean, if it's zero, then it's not forced or the equation. So we may always assume that the coefficient is non-zero, and that we factor it out, and we are left with a monic polynomial. And furthermore, as we have seen in the previous video for the solution of the cubic equation, we may assume that we've managed to suppress the equation, that is, we've managed by shifting to get rid of the third power. So it's similar method, to analogous one uh, to the one that we've seen in the cubic, so check that video out. So we will assume that the next coefficient that is non-zero here is of x to the power of 2 and then plus bx and plus c equals to 0. So we would like to solve this equation. So how would we proceed? So we will assume uh, that we are, we may, assume, we can always assume that we are over the complex field and the complex field is algebraically closed, which means that every polynomial has uh, complex roots that are uh, the roots that are in C. All of its roots are in C and therefore from a well-known theorem every polynomial this polynomial decomposes when it's monic it decomposes as the product of its uh, roots not exactly the roots but as the following product. So it's x minus x1 times x minus x2 times x minus x3 times x minus x4 where those roots are in general in, they are typically going to be in, in, in C, or in general in the complex. So anyways, uh, we such a decomposition is guaranteed to exist. And then we see that this is a second order polynomial and this is a second order polynomial. So we, we might as well s uh, try to find a decomposition of this polynomial to factor it out as a product of uh, two second order polynomials. So suppose that x to the power of 4 is ax, uh, you're not supposing, so we have x to the power of 4 plus uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, and this equals to, well, we want to find two second order polynomials such that this polynomial is their product. So without loss of generality, we may assume that here we have x squared and x squared, because of this decomposition, this is a monic one. And so from this times this, we are going to have the fourth power. And so suppose now that uh, x has some coefficient alpha. And it's helpful that we're solving this equation that does not have the third power here, because it means, you can check it out quite easily, that the coefficient here of x must be minus alpha. That's the only way to make sure that the coefficient of x to the power of 3 in this, uh, in this decomposition, when we open the brackets, will be 0, because the only way to get x to the power of 3 if we multiply this x squared by minus alpha x, so it, the coefficient of, uh, of x to the power of 3 is going to be, so it's minus alpha x to the power of 3, and then the other way to get the other way to get the third power is when we multiply this by this, so it's plus alpha x to the power of 3, and altogether the coefficient of x to the power of 3 is 0. And now if we have any coefficient here, beta, then this coefficient has to be c over beta to meet the last constraint of the free term, because the only way to get the free term is to multiply what we have here with what we have in here. And then when we open the brackets, when we open up the brackets, and when we will equate the coefficients, what we will obtain is that uh, the equation for A is given by, given by, so it's just opening the brackets and, and seeing it's really straightforward. So it's C of a beta uh, plus beta minus alpha squared. This is the cof this is has to be A in order for this to work. And then B over alpha, we can prove it has to be uh, just C over beta minus beta. And so this is this is the equation that we have to solve in order to be able to decompose this polynomial to factor it out in the following way. And if we are successful in this factoring out, if we find any alpha and any beta such that this factorization is true, 
such that it holds. It, it doesn't matter which alpha or which beta here, because all the possibilities will yield the same roots for this polynomial. Then solving this quadratic equation is just reduce, it reduces to solving two quadratic equations, which we can do easily, right? So it's easily solvable. So solving the two quadratic equations, we obtain all the four roots of the quadratic equation. So now let, let's just see if we can solve or for for alpha and beta here and find them. So I remind you that A is known, so uh, we can write A plus alpha squared equals to C over beta plus beta. And beta over alpha here equals C over beta minus beta. And so while still it, it may not be clear how to solve this nonlinear system of equations, there's a nice trick that saves the day. So if we were to take A plus alpha squared of this squared, what we obtain here is c over beta squared, squared, and here we'd have plus, so twice this times beta, so it's 2c plus beta squared. And when we square this part, beta over alpha squared, we are getting c over beta squared minus 2c and plus beta squared. And so hopefully now the reason for this trick is becoming apparent, because if we were to subtract those equations, then we get rid of this, and we get rid of this. So what we have is an equation only for alpha, and the equation is the following one. So a plus uh, alpha squared squared my minus beta over alpha over this squared equals 4c. Okay, so how does this help if we look at this just naively? So it's alpha squared, and then this is to the power of 2. So it's fourth order, and then if we multiply by alpha squared, then this is a sixth order equation in alpha, where we only needed to solve uh, uh, a quartic equation. But the thing is that this is actually a cubic equation in alpha squared. So if we were to multiply this by alpha squared, then what we have is a plus alpha squared squared times alpha squared and here we would have minus 4c times alpha squared and minus b squared this is zero this is the equation for alpha squared and now if we were to make the substitution t equals alpha squared then we obtain the equation t and here we have a plus t squared minus 4ct and minus b squared equals zero, right? So hopefully I didn't make any computational mistakes here. Seems to be just right. And so this is actually a cubic equation, and we know how to solve the cubic in general. So we know how to solve the cubic. If, if you don't, then check the previous video in the playlist. But we know how to solve the cubic, and when, once we solve the cubic, we obtain the value for t. And then when we know t, we can actually infer the value of alpha, which just take any of the squared roots. It's either plus square root of t or the minus square root of t. Uh, and in general, we may even need to do it over the complex. But any we can pick any t here, and then any root here of t, of the possible two, and then we know the value of alpha. And then once we know the value for alpha, then actually we can look at, say, this equation over here, b is known. So the equation here for beta would be, so this is beta over alpha times beta. Uh, we multiply this by beta is c minus beta squared. And so we then need to solve a quadratic equation for beta. And once we are done with that, so we know a value of alpha and a value of beta, we choose any one such solution, any value for alpha, and then any solution beta that solves this equation. And once we are done with that, then we have actually found a factorization of this polynomial to such a pair of second order polynomials. And then all we need to do to find the roots of the quartic equation is just to solve two quadratic equations and obtain all the four roots of the quartic equation. Now, clearly, if I, if I were to follow all the steps carefully and use all the coefficients and write the formula explicitly, it will take much longer and it would be a monstrosity. But in principle, if you want to solve such equation, then following those simplifying steps gives you an algorithm of how to solve the quartic equation. 
So hope you're enjoying this video and thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.